Okay, so this week we're going to talk about employer expectations and we do have a few employers, some of them you know, um, some maybe not. So if I can just have the employers go around and introduce themselves and what company they're from, please. Rose, I see you sitting here on my screen, so I'm going to make you go first. <laughs> That's all right. My name is Rose Burrows. I am an HR manager at GE Aviation in Muskegon. My name is Josh Stauffer. I'm the CEO and president of Blue Flame Thinking, which is a marketing agency here in Grand Rapids and in Chicago. My name is Laura Price. I'm from Dwyer's Manufacturing. I'm the workforce development manager. My name is Unica Brera. I'm uh, one of the Spectrum Health uh, talent acquisition team uh, recruiter. And I don't think Tamika is on here yet. She might sign in later. Um, she's with DAC Automotive. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Number one, if everyone can mute, please. I'm getting some feedback. Thanks. All right. What are your top expectations for your employees? Um, I suppose I'll go first again. Um, so for our employees, it's really about, um, you know, showing up, doing what you say you're going to do, um, and, you know, really having the best communication possible with your coworkers, your leaders, um, you know, and, and everyone as a whole. I can go next. Um, as far as Spectrum Health employees, we do definitely look, look into team, uh, being a team player. So having that willingness to help, um, also having the adaptability. There's just so many moving pieces within healthcare and having that flexibility and adaptability skill. Jump in here. Uh, I work for, like I said, DeWise Manufacturing. We're a metal fabrication company. So on top of what all the ladies have said so far, we add to it a, a lot of critical thinking skills. Um, with working with metal fabrication, there's a, a lot of opportunities to improve a process or um, to make a design better. So we really, we uh, expect our team members to play a part to making a lot of improvements that will help our customers as well as our company. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll second everything everyone else said. I think that in some cases, we would describe a lot of expectations as sort of the table stakes of being an employee, right? Showing up on time, being there consistently, communicating um, with your supervisors, communicating with your team well. Um, critical thinking is huge. Um, I think the expectation is that, uh, at least from our end, because we're a small business, that everyone takes ownership over their own workload and is able to manage themselves uh, beyond just the, the table stakes and the teamwork and the creative processes and things as well, so. Great. I think Diane is going to join us. Diane, are you in here? And should be coming back. We just left our breakout session, so she should be back in here. Okay. Oh, Diane, was that you? I think I heard you. Uh, I see me. Can you see me? I have 90 people on my screen, so sorry. Yeah. But I hear you. <laughs> um, so they just answered the first question, our other employers. So if you want to introduce yourself really quick and then answer the, uh, what are your top expectations for your employees? Hi, my name is Diane Smith and I work at Northside Foods. I'm the lead trainer there. And the top expectation for our employees is respect. We 
want to show our employees respect and yet we expect them to respect the other workers and their jobs and to do their best at every single day. Hey, thank you for jumping in there, Diane. The next one is what type of skills and abilities do your best employees possess? Um, so here at GE Aviation, really our, our best employees, um, you know, have the ability to uh, be curious um, and again, communicate and kind of show us what they can do as well as um, can doing their best in every single day. I second that on the communication piece. Um, it's just having that effective communication is very important, especially um, in order to maintain that patient safety within healthcare and not just patients alone, um, family members and other employees as well. Um, I would say another one would be to be motivated. Um, you know, sh show up, do their work and, and have that passion for what you do. We also think it's important to be able to do different jobs. If we've got a shortage in one area, if you're a person who can multitask or you can uh, be very varied in your jobs, for you to be able to stop what you're doing, oh no, we have a problem over here and go and help in a different area to be that jack of all trades is a really great thing as well. I think an aspect to our team members here that uh, what they possess is a drive to continue to grow and to continue to learn. Um, the, the manufacturing world doesn't slow down in terms of changes in um, automation and, and some of the different customers that we work with. So uh, something that we are always looking for and some of our best employees have is that constant interest and drive to continue to learn and to continue to grow. Yeah, that, that constant uh, forever student mentality, I think is huge for our employees as well. The types of skills and abilities that our best employees possess, um, some of them are very specific to their job roles because we have you know, eight, eight different disciplines within the agency. But across the board, communication is huge. Teamwork is massive. Uh, the ability to employ critical thought and not just be production or order takers especially for our creative staff when we're trying to come up with solutions to our clients' problems and maybe doing things that they've never done before is huge. And uh, I don't think it can be understated. Um, helpfulness, I think, is a huge skill for our employees too. Pitching in, helping others. On a daily basis, we have our stand-up as a full agency and people will regularly trade work, pitch in, grab something off someone else's plate and help people get their job done, um, which is a distinctly different experience in a workplace where people are only focused on their job and, and coming in nine to five and getting out the door and only concerned with what is on their plate. So. I think that's a great point made too. Um, with helping out, you get to learn other, other responsibilities within different roles and that opens up opportunities for future roles too and new skill sets. unmute myself to ask the next question. Um, describe your onboarding experience and expectations for new employees. Um, so here at GE, our onboarding, it starts the same regardless of the position that you're in. Um, and it's usually about three days long. Um, it really starts with diving into at the very base level, what we make, um, getting into some of the expectations that we, we do have, whether it be attendance or conduct, um, and as well as learning about the history of the company, so you know where we've come from, um, and then starting to get into some of the specifics of the different software that we use, the different programs that we use, um, and over those three days, you spend about three half days of classroom and three half days of job shadowing um, where you have the opportunity to take notes, ask questions, and you know that would be some of the expectations that we would have of our new employees is to ask those questions um, and you know, knowing that there's there's no stupid question. You're, you're coming in not knowing much about the company.
all of our new workers get assigned to a mentor where they have a person that will be with them for the first number of days and just kind of be their buddy and teach them how things work. And they will also go through extensive safety training uh, for every area of the plant before they're even allowed onto the plant floor. Our, it's basically a two-day process, the first day being um, all the pieces you need to know and then the safety piece and then the second day a little bit more hands-on. Wise, we have um, the first day you start is a day long training um, that goes through safety as well as um, just other information about the company. Um, there's usually, of course, lunch involved, everybody likes food. But then from there, they spend a, a good six, eight weeks with a trainer. Um, depending on what area you're in here at the company, um, your onboarding experience is spent um, a majority of the time with a trainer that's going to help get you uh, to understand the culture, to understand the company better, to understand the particular area that you're working in or any sort of skills and abilities particular to the company. So it's similar to kind of what Diane was saying as a kind of a mentor, but this person is really um, very closely tied with them for the good six, eight weeks. I would say within Spectrum House, it's, it's fairly similar. Um, first couple days, it's uh, mainly based on like system entity, system and entity orientation. So the first couple days is uh, based on like learning the mission, the values, um, safety, compliance, things like that. Um, third day and on, it's mainly focused on which department you're going to be on or in, sorry. Um, with so many different types of roles within healthcare, it can be so so different as far as like, you know, having a couple weeks of, of budding up with someone where it can be anywhere from seven to eight weeks of um, uh, shadowing and orientation. Yeah, our, our process is uh, split into two different groups because one, we do a significant amount of contract to hire employment. So uh, in that case, people are working on site at our organization for three to six months prior to being hired on. And so our hope is that they've absorbed a significant amount of our processes and our culture and things along that way as we make a, an assessment as to whether or not they're the right fit and they make an assessment as to whether or not they think we're the right fit for them. Um, in the other case, when we do uh, regular hiring processes, uh, there's more of a, a lengthy onboarding process. So we have about a week of solid onboarding scheduling and things. And it starts very high level, um, as you were just mentioning, in terms of like, here's our processes, here's our, um, here's the way we do things. There's time spent with me. So there's about a quarter of a day on the second day, just going over our agency's history, our clients, who we work with, um, some of the other people at the agency. There's individualized meetings with different teams at the agency so people get an understanding of what those teams do and how they operate and function with each other uh, there is lunch if uh i guess pre-covid i'm not sure what we would do now maybe we just ordered jimmy john's for everyone remotely at the company we can all have lunch on a virtual um setting but there's a lot of team building and absorbing and uh, we don't let our, so everyone at our organization works in front of a computer all day long. Uh, new employees are not given a computer until the third day on the job. So they're not asked to do any work. They're not asked to sign into any systems. They're not asked to sort of put themselves in the mode of having to start doing and creating. Um, we spend those first couple of days job shadowing, getting them up to speed on things. Um, in fact, we prefer to have them meet with our dedicated financial advisors so they can get their 401ks and everything set and they get solid financial advice about what they want to do independently from us because I'm not a fiduciary. Um, and uh, they get their healthcare set up and we make sure all the logistical things are taken care of and they get to spend time with the team before we ask them to even power on their device and deal with our IT group. So. Next, if you each could describe your company culture, what it looks like at your organization. Um, so the culture here at GE is really one that I guess I would describe it as teaming with an individual ownership component. 
Um, and I say teaming because um, each area has specific metrics that they work to hit on a regular basis. Um, they know to be worked on. Um, if there is a huddle at the beginning of each shift and at the end of each shift so they can see where they were at um, and where they ended. Um, and then the individual component comes in with their own um, personal promotion a matrix that they are able to work through to see what their individual productivity, efficiency, um, and their individual metrics are, which is what then they use to be able to um, earn more money and um, to increase their their skills. So you can you get the best of, of both worlds in that sense. Um, and then there's also an element of, of trust with our employees, especially on the on the floor. Um, it's not um, where they, you know, everybody has a, a specific break time that you are able to take the break at your leisure um, because the expectation is that, um, you know, if anything needs to be covered, you find someone um, within your cell that is kind of just keeping an eye out for your machine and um, trust that you take it at the, the appropriate time and come back in time. I would say for um, Spectrum Health, we focus on what we call the four C's. Uh, so there's collaboration, compassion, uh, curiosity, and courage. Um, our culture would be mainly focused on what we call people first. So, you know, we're looking to know our employers, include them, and empower them in all aspects. Um, we do, you know, with that, with that point of people first, we realize that you know, everyone has different circumstances, different stories, different backgrounds. Um, so being very transparent with communication, um, being able to empower our employees and, and providing them with information um, in order to be able to make decisions on, on within their role. Um, and then just, you know, being able to um, celebrate their successes and, and then recognize their efforts too. We try very hard to have a family atmosphere. Our culture is all that we are the H2 family. We like to look out for each other at work, especially safety, as well as outside of work. And we try very hard to make sure that every worker feels totally respected and that they in turn respect the work that they do. And that family atmosphere is so very important to us. Wise has a similar, the Wise is a family name, so we very much um, liken ourselves as a second family. We probably spend more time mm -hmm. together than sometimes we do our own biological family here. So I think we do try to take also that stance of everybody is a little bit unique in terms of what their needs are. So um, with that being said, we, we offer a lot of different types of benefits to help with that culture, um, being flexible with some schedules, but knowing at the end, of course, we do need to get um, the work out. But with having that type of culture, people tend to work better together um, and want to work better together. So that way um, we can do what we need to do as a family to get that product out. Yep. As a, so we're a marketing and advertising agency. We work in a pretty specific space. So we're a lot different from a culture standpoint than a lot of agencies people might be familiar with. So I don't know if I'm dating myself by referencing Mad Men, uh, but that's not what it looks like working at our agency. We're uh, respectful adults. Our, our culture is um, one of hard work, responsibility, treating each other like family to some extent, but also recognizing that at the end of the day, we're a team first and a family second. So, um, that what that means is we've got to take responsibility for any failures that we have individually as well as a group. We get to celebrate the successes together. We have uncomfortable conversations about failure so we can not repeat those things on a regular basis and hope that it's a growth opportunity for everyone, including the agency. Um, we are a nine to five kind of agency. So our work-life balance is incredibly good. Most of our employees only work about 37 hours a week um, in contrast to a lot of other advertising agencies and marketing agencies where the expectation would be that you'll probably be taking 
uh, Uber's home because public transportation will be closed by the time we leave work. Um, in our industry, the hallmark of uh, large advertising agencies is to hire incredibly talented, creative young people and then burn them out as quick as possible. And we take an approach that is more lifestyle oriented. So nine to five agency, 50% of our agency has elementary and middle school aged kids. We have incredibly flexible work from home, even prior to mandatory work from home. Um, we try to take care of our people. We do get to have fun at work, um, but I would say <laughs> Uh, the number of times that our large Nerf guns get shot is probably much less than most people think. Most of all, uh, most of the time the people shooting those are our clients because they come into the space and they think they look really cool and then they make a big mess and uh, everyone else wishes they had time to use them. But yeah, we're, uh, we're pretty um, serious too. We work in financial service marketing and manufacturing, so we don't do manufacturing for people like Nike who produce consumer products. We have a pretty um, engineered manufacturing, highly technical group of clients. Um, and our biggest hurdle is usually engineers and procurement departments and compliance departments. So our team spends a lot of time talking to lawyers and engineers instead of people making tennis shoes. So. Great, thank you. Now, if each of you could describe your favorite part of the work that your organization does. Um, so at GE Aviation, we have our um, mission statement, which really is part of what I like. It's different and it really kind of hits home. Um, with it being, we invent the future of flight, lift people up and bring them home safely. Um, you know, the in, inventing uh, the future of flight kind of speaks to the different things that we do. And one of the cool things here in Skigan that we've done is actually the team here a few years ago developed a, a machine. Um, we call it the MKG for Muskegon um, because the prior machines were just not doing what we needed at the um, speed and efficiency that, that we needed to work with another local uh, company to um, design and engineer and manufacture that machine. And now um, not only do we have hundreds of these machines in our facility, but then also other GE aviation sites across the U.S. have them in their facility as well. So it kind of really speaks to that teaming aspect and being able to do um, something like that in the group that developed that was anything from engineers and managers to um, operators. It was really a, a well-rounded group that did that. Um, you know, and, and then, of course, it hones in on safety aspects. We have to do it at a um, in completely different level of, of safety um, because of the fact that we are lifting people up and we do not want those airplanes to come down for something that could have been avoided. I think the favorite part of the work that I do is helping workers to feel appreciated. In addition to doing all the training within our company, I'm also in charge of culture. And when you can say to somebody at the end of a, of a long eight hour shift, they, they're hot, they're tired, they, they've worked really hard to say thank you to them. And they say, wow, I really appreciate that. No, you know, no, people didn't say thank you to me today. And just the fact that somebody takes the time to recognize the work that they've done, to thank them for the work that they've done, and to remind them that they are a really important part of our organization. Every single person, whether it's the plant manager, the custodian, or the line worker, every person is a really valuable member and helping them to feel valued is I think the most, it's probably the best part of my job. I would say for myself within Spectrum Health, um, my favorite part of the job is definitely building connections and relationships. Um, community involvement is another big part of my favorite things to do, opportunities to volunteer. Um, but I would say within Spectrum Health, um, with it being healthcare, is just, you know, having 
or knowing that you're making patients or you know people feel better, um, getting to a better place, uh, providing resources, um, knowing that you could potentially affect in a positive way family members um, in your community. I think for me, the, the favorite part of what I do personally is um, when you see people find careers and opportunities that maybe they had enough thought that they could do or that would be an option for them. Um, the DeWise in general spends a lot of time out in the community talking about careers and opportunities, something similar to what we're doing here. So when I can bring people in here and they find, um, they find their niche, they find their home here at the company, that's, that's something I, I really appreciate about my job. And in terms of what the company does, it, it's realizing that what we do here helps multiple different segments of um, the US, the, the communities we're in, you know, we're in healthcare, we're working in stores, we're in medical supplies, we're, we're doing um, power generation equipment. It, it's all helping the bigger picture of the, the country and the community we're in. So there's definitely pieces of that that you have some pride in what you're doing here because you know it, it affects the bigger picture. Yeah, so to split it across a couple of different conversations, there's what's the favorite part of the work we do as an agency. And I think that is, um, it's the aspect of making. So as a creative organization, almost everyone that works for us identifies themselves as sort of a maker of one way or another. Uh, their passion is around the creation of things. And being able to do that in the service of our clients, I think is one of the things that gives almost everyone at the agency like their favorite part of the work. Um, personally, my favorite thing at work is helping organizations uh, navigate through change management effectively, especially in some underserved uh, industries and, and sectors that we work with. Um, and it's always really, at least for me, fulfilling to help an organization get past some roadblocks or really sort of modernize their marketing. Um, and see end goals sort of come a lot quicker for them. Um, and you get to, if you spend time in a role like that long enough, you get to see the effect that that has on your clients' careers. You get to see the effect that that has on their organizations and their ability to hit their own goals. And so we're sort of a facilitator. Um, and being able to help other people reach their goals, I think, is, is huge for us. From a personal level, my favorite part of the work is, um, you know, kind of similar to what Diane said. You know, I... Um, I love being able to talk with the employees, to be able to celebrate with them. I mean, this year we had two large anniversaries. We had two employees have their 20 year anniversary and one employee have their 40 year anniversary. And so one of the things I do for big anniversaries is uh, we paint up these bowling pins as sort of like little trophies for them. And I, I get to do that. And so one of my favorite things has nothing to do with the work we do at all and everything to do with the people that work there is to create these sort of custom trophy artwork pieces for them and hand them out. Um, and then to see everyone sort of display them on their desks long term or treat them uh, like something more than they are, which is just used bowling pins from the alley down the street that have been painted. So. She always thinks she thinks of me and Bonte not cool that I want to bring him up and say she do. I've been Is someone else trying to talk? Okay, we're gonna move on. What is the earning potential for someone in your role and what about other roles in your organization? So for someone in an HR role like mine, um, you know, there's definitely some great earning potential um, because you can start in you know, a very um, kind of into just get into the field role in terms of HR, you know, assistant or HR generalist up to HR manager and, and more senior levels, um, especially with our corporate, um, you can really get to executive level and um, really maximize your earning potential. Um, but even in roles throughout the our facility. Um, you know, if you're coming in and as an operator, it's a it's a great range. Um, our 
starting wage is, um, you know, really in line with where it, it should be for the area. But then on top of that, we're able to do what we call a game sharing bonus, where our employees um, throughout the facility um, earn a bonus that is usually 10 to 15 percent of their annual wages. Um, so even as an operator, you could end up with an annual bonus um, of you know anywhere from from five to fifteen thousand dollars, and that really adds on to your to your base wage, and it's a huge selling point for our recruiting aspects. I think the earning um, ability is is unlimited. If you our plant manager started as a temporary worker, worked her way as a machine operator and worked her way all the way in 18 years time to be the plant manager. So I think your earning potential is unlimited. It's how hard do you want to work and how, um, how you can make yourself just a valuable piece of this organization. And I don't think that there's the only limits you have are the limits you put on yourself. I would agree with that statement. My current president started out cleaning toilets at 16 years old at this company and worked his way up to now being the president. So I, I completely echo. I think the world is truly an oyster for anybody. It's a matter of what is it you want to do and how hard are you willing to work to get there. Um, the, the reward is the pay that will come along with it and the, the compensation that you'll receive based on the job that you're doing um, I, I've often told students, don't look at that monetary value. What is it you want to do? Because when you enjoy what you're doing, um, the money will follow you. You won't be chasing the money. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know, within Spectrum Health, there's different levels of advancement, um, anywhere from like entry level, associate level, intermediate level, senior level. Um, typically, uh, every year we do performance evaluations too, just based on how well you're doing. If you're on track, um, they will provide up to a 3% merit increase. Um, as far as like any promotions, there's potential to uh, provide up to a 10% increase with any promotions as well. And um, really within Spectrum Health, it's such, it's almost like a little city. So there, there needs to be all types of roles, um, all types of people. So to, to make that organization run. Uh, so like I said, anywhere from entry level to there's just so much room for, for advancement, different opportunities to grow. Yeah, earning potential for somebody in my role. So CEO roles are going to run the gamut from people who don't get to take a paycheck for decades at all to people who take shareholder dividends and the dozens of millions of dollars on a quarterly basis. So what I would say is I, I would caution people to equate CEO uh, with a six-figure above salary. There's a ton of small business owners, myself included, who uh, are more likely to pass that on to their employees than take it themselves. And it's a, when you're a small business owner specifically, it's a long game that you're playing. So unless you're incredibly lucky and you have a success story like founders or somewhere else where things explode and you never really even know how they're treating themselves, um, you, you always have to be business focused. And that usually means that you're putting your own needs secondary as a business owner. Now, for other people at the agency, we have a role from entry level positions all the way up through senior director positions. Um, and salary starts at 5%, 5% above um, both market and industry average for all of our positions. And earning potential for somebody in a director role is a six figure salary and above at our organization. Um, it's higher if you move into the Chicago market, but then you've got to realize also as a young person, you need to start considering things like cost of living and other things that are attached to that as well. And so our Chicago employees make an average uh, percentage more than our Grand Rapids employees just because of the market differences that are at play there. The same way it, uh, a developer or an engineer software developer, um, at least traditionally, is going to make far more on either of the coasts than in the middle of the country because the cost of living there is 
outrageous. The same house you live in right now is a million dollar house in Portland. So that has to be compensated appropriately to even afford to live there as employees. Great, thank you. Next, if you each could please rate the importance of being open-minded to different viewpoints and ways of doing things while keeping in mind one's own knowledge base. Um, yeah, I think if, if you're really selling yourself short, if you're not open-minded to different viewpoints, um, you, know, it, it, you miss out on learning and, and hearing from people who think differently than yourself. Um, in, in the best that you can pull from that um, if you're not open to it. So, you know, I think that is, is super important, but at the same time, you want to um, really know what your, your strengths are, but also know what your weaknesses are and what you may not know to be able to kind of develop yourself um, as, as a whole and, and really continue to, to grow like we've been talking about. I think it's important to be open-minded, especially if you're a creative person where you may come up with a suggestion on how something can be done in a better manner. Safety is always our number one priority. So we can be open-minded and we can have different viewpoints as long as safety is still the king. Um, but sometimes we may have a worker who works on a line who says, gee, you know, if we did A, B, and C in a different order, it would be much more productive, it would be much more efficient. So it's really important for us to be open-minded and to listen to the people who are actually doing the work um, as long as safety is the most important feature. Yeah, it definitely having an open mind is very, very important, especially working alongside different professions. Um, I believe we can all learn something from each other. It doesn't matter in what role you are, um, you're in. But the most important thing is to, um, you know, be effective at what you're doing, having that accuracy, accuracy while always following the process. Um, and how what Diane had mentioned too is just maintaining that safety, uh, patient safety for or safety for everyone. Um, but yeah, there's different ways to, to do things. There's different, um, you can have the same role and there's uh, it just how it works better for you. Um, you know, there's different ways of organization, different ways of prioritizing things, um, communication. Um, but, you know, in the end, it's patient safety and then how you're going to um, complete effectively your work. Yeah, I think um, it's interesting because we could sit everyone down in our company. We only have, you know, 20 or so employees. We could all be in the same room and have a, a discussion around things. But I think it's really important as a small business, especially in the creative space, to create an environment that fosters discussion and uh, critical thought. And so we love different viewpoints and opinions. I mean, we work hand in hand with our clients strategically as partners. Um, and if our, if we just told our clients exactly what they were expecting, I mean, aside from the magic of being a consultant, I'm not sure why they would value us. And so we usually have differing opinions with our clients internally. If we have three specialists on the job, all three specialists are going to have a different viewpoint of the best way to do it based on their uh, previous background and knowledge. Um, I think, it's really critical to foster an environment where open discussion and expressing different viewpoints is the norm because otherwise people will self-select out of discussions. I think it's also um, a, a thing to note in terms of as people advance in their career or uh, in their position, the impulse might be to allow the most senior people in the room to talk first. At our organization, we like to require the senior people to be quiet. <laughs> until the end and allow other voices to be heard because um, it's just across the board as a practice, um, we like to employ listening first and speaking second so that we're able to not push the discussion too far one way or shove our own viewpoints. Because as people in the leadership position, we have distinct viewpoints too, but if we talk first, it's more likely that other people will just agree through silence than voice something differently. And so it's an active, sort of thing that we keep in the front of our mind if we're having a large group discussion 
that senior level positions and above will direct the conversation, but not put forth viewpoints until the end on things. Okay, we only have two questions left, so we're running out of time here. Uh, how does your company promote a work-life balance? Um, so within our organization, um, it does definitely vary based on the position, um, but for those that, you know, are you know, maybe based on the floor or things like that, um, we really do try to uh, make sure to offer an understand um, employees and work with them to how they can use uh, time that is you know allotted to really be able to to balance their their needs at home we have a couple processes in place to um, you know dictate shift preferences um, and between our three facilities where they're working if that makes that easier for them um, you know, we do have several family members that, that work here. So we try to do our best to you know, work with them and to kind of work what, what does, what is best for their family, um, you know, in positions that maybe are able to offer a little bit more flexibility, such as when we um, all were kind of under shutdown, being able to, to work from, from home when necessary. Um, and that definitely has increased since everything has developed with the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, but I think, you know, it's really also being able to have some of the conversations with our employees about, you know, what is going on, how we can work with them without, um, you know, disadvantaging them or, or, or their team as well, able to come to a, a cohesive, uh, resolution with them is, is really our, our goal to be able to to promote and and give them that work-life balance and advantage. We being a fast and flexible co-manufacturer have a very erratic uh, workload and so it's been very challenging to promote a good work-life balance, especially if sometimes you need somebody to stay for a 12 hour shift or um, it's been one of our challenges. I know that we try and take into account if somebody has a family issue or a personal issue um, and do the best that we can with it. The wise is very similar in that um, I think a lot of it has to do with communication. We try to be flexible and agile for our team members so that they can get to appointments, they can um, participate in um, kid activities, they can they can do what they need to do while being mindful. We have um, have the work done here also. So I, I think a lot of what we promote here is that communication between the team member and their, their leadership so that they can um, get the resolution necessary to, to make everybody, I think, as satisfied as we can be. Uh, we definitely do the best we can. Being almost 24-7 of a company, um, there's always opportunities for somebody to adjust schedules and to have some of that flexibility, but a lot of it revolves around uh, good communication and a good understanding of both parties as to uh, you know, how we can make that successful for everybody. I agree. So um, just different efforts, um, as mentioned, healthcare doesn't ever close down. It's always open 24 seven. Um, so there's different opportunities for positions where it's just resource based, part time, full time. So really just um, as mentioned that communication and uh, making sure that that's going to be a good fit for the employee. Um, again, communication with, uh, you know, being able to trade shifts and there's also utilizing PTO. So, um, but yeah, different opportunities and just making sure from the get-go that it's gonna be um, ideal uh, for that employer, or employee, sorry, to be able to have that work-life balance. Yeah, a lot, of the, a lot of similar things. I would say a thread that is both beneficial and detrimental from our industry standpoint and work-life balance is that we can do our work from anywhere. So none of our employees need to be physically on site to do their work, which has made transitioning to work from home during the COVID 
issue incredibly easy, right? We just decided not to come back in the next day and we were just as effective from home. Uh, we have really flexible work from home uh, normally. And, you know, we do a lot of other things. Uh, we don't track sick time or uh, time off requests. The only thing we track are vacation times. People's directors keep really close tabs of that because we're small, so we sort of have to schedule things out, but we try to encourage our employees to take all their vacation. What we find is the more senior people get, the less vacation they take overall, unfortunately. So some of our senior level employees will take less than half of their uh, vacation time, not because they want a payout at the end of the year, but just because they cannot make themselves <laughs> unplug from a personality standpoint. I would say the biggest issue we have is that because we can work from everywhere and we're always plugged in, work is always like dinging in our ear. Like there's always an email, there's always a base camp thread, there's always a ping, there's a client that sends a request at 11 o'clock at night. Uh, so it is a constant battle. It just requires some cultural conversations on a regular basis to remind people to take advantage of it. Like schedule your appointments in the middle of the day. Come in an hour late to drop your kids off for school. Take advantage of it. Break your day up however you want. We don't care what hours you're at work, just as long as you can proactively manage your workload and get your work done, that's fine. But also be mindful that work doesn't creep into every other part of your life in, in the meantime, so. Okay, our last question is about team building and how important it is in your organization and what kinds of team building do you guys uh, promote or take part in? Uh, so here at GE, it is uh, very, very important and it's something that we kind of live by. We call our, um, our workforce a, a teaming workforce um, and we actually have um, a specific department called our lean team, which, which works on this. Um, and regardless of where it's at, this lean team will, will get together a, a group of people, um, sometimes it's anywhere from the, the operator, inspector, um, the engineer, managers, uh, various levels of employees together to work on some type of um, issue or idea that we have and to be able to be more efficient, to um, you know, solve something that might be be going on unexpectedly, um, in, in being able to get together, brainstorm, throw out different ideas, um, see what might work and what might not. Um, and, and we do that for not only production, shipping and receiving, we've even done it here within the HR team, um, including some of our employees on different policy changes or different um, processes that that we might be doing so it's really across the organization that teaming aspect into you know everything we do so it's not just you know one person coming up with the idea and, and running it um, you are looking at it from all sides of the spectrum to try to work out any any issues that you that you might have as you know work on the best the best ideas we very often do specialized leadership training and in, in do our team building activities there because we feel that if our leadership team functions as a team, that'll dribble down. <clears throat> Excuse me. We also like to celebrate with our teams when a line does an amazing job and breaks a record. <coughs> Excuse me. We like to celebrate as a company and give everybody a new shirt. If one uh, group happens to do something amazing, we think the celebration piece is really an important piece of team building. I would say uh, within Spectrum Health or within my department itself, um, we focus or try to utilize our team meetings quite a bit. Um, so we have um, quarterly team meetings where we all get together um, and we start off with maybe something like an icebreaker or just something out of the routine, uh, just trying to uh, maybe a test that they'll give us and they'll buddy us up with something that we normally don't, who we normally don't work with alongside um, day, to, day by day. Um, we also have a yearly acts of kindness, kindness that we do uh, throughout the organization where we pick uh, an opportunity to volunteer for, for a different organization and just giving back to the community. 
again, getting out of that daily routine um, and focusing on something else and um, being able to be side by side, your coworkers in a different environment. Advice, the teamwork is the essential part of what, what we do here. Um, it, it goes all the way to the fact that we have a monthly bonus that's based on metrics that we as a team have to commit to and, and work towards. So everybody from the president to somebody who's cleaning the floors. So um, th there's a, a lot of different things that we do um, that work towards building some of the teams. But I'll say, you know, a lot of them have talked about some various different aspects of training. So I'll, I'll step away from that and then just talk about some of the fun aspects of the team building. We'll have activities like horseshoe tournaments and, and cornhole just to build some teams that in a fun manner too. Um, we do a lot of work in here and we we're very hard on a day-to-day -day basis. So some of the team building we try to promote are some things outside of just working on, uh, on the metal on the floor, but getting outside of it and getting them to build some of that team aspect on a more personal level. Um, so that way they can, I think, build up better communication. They can build a better understanding of the team that they're working with and some of the people. So that's really helped um, a lot of our team members to work better together by kind of getting outside of just the work element and doing some fun team building activities that help them get to know each other at a little more personal level. Yeah, I'll second that. Again, we're small, so it's possible for us to all get together and go axe throwing or something, right, as a group. Um, the teams regularly take out, you know, the directors regularly take their individual teams out to lunch. We work in a, in a team situation on projects and for clients every day, so team building is huge for us. Um, we do, uh, I think one of the things that everyone enjoys the most is because our industry is a little slow in December, we do an entire month of what we call the holiday hurrah, which is this ridiculous massive challenge where people can earn points over the course of the entire month. And it usually comes down to pretty competitive, ridiculous behavior of everything from people building gingerbread homes on their desk that are bigger than their desk to, um, you know, you get points for putting your timesheets in, which are unfortunately thing we have to do in our space. and. Uh, just all kinds of crazy stuff. So we try to come up with things like that that aren't too disruptive uh, to work, that are not work focused to help people connect better as individuals instead of just teammates. And then we feel like that just kind of grows teams. When people treat each other like real humans, they tend to do better working as uh, teammates with each other, so. Hey, well, thank you guys. We are a little bit over our time, but um, does anyone have any final words of wisdom that they would like to say uh, for the benefit of the youth about employer expectations? Do your best and do it every day and love what you do. Yeah, I mean, I think that's huge. As a small business owner, I can tell that every single one of my employees is engaged, right? You can tell when someone isn't. Um, and it sends very clear signals to your employer if you don't appear to be engaged. Like they're, especially at, at the level that we're at where we're making investments into those people, to have that not be reciprocal is, is generally an indication that they're not the right fit for us at the organization, so. Awesome, well thank you guys so much for your time. And um, if I could have all of the youth please stay on so we can talk about the survey. I think Trina's gonna go over that for you. Thank you to our employers for your time today. I appreciate it and I will see some of you again next week for week five.